Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the LED of Embrace. It's something you see a lot in uh, the LARP community and also slightly a bit in the reenactment community. In the LARP community it's uh, very prevalent because it's a very cheap piece of armor and you only need to defend against latex weapons instead of the iron reenactment weapons. And in the reenactment community I see more people uh, wearing gambesons which uh, makes this an obsolete piece of uh, armor. So, were they uh, ever used historically? It's um, a bit of a hot topic because people are uh, debating a lot about whether or not leather armor was prevalent in the medieval period. And I'm gonna say yes, because uh, the Van Brace, uh, there were 13th uh, century finds of Van Braces in the Netherlands from uh, Leiden and uh, Dordrecht, with the Leiden one been, being for, from uh, the 14th and early 15th century, uh, Dordrecht one being from the 13th and 14th century. Also in Dordrecht was found uh, finger protection made from leather. So whether or not fan braces were used, yes they were used, because, um, but were they used prevalently? Um, I believe it could have been, we don't know uh, for sure because leather is uh, deteriorating rapidly over time so very little survives. Those found in the Van Brazers found in Leiden and Dordrecht are also the only pieces found uh, of that type. So I'm gonna explain why I think it could have been prevalent in the medieval period. So imagine this, you're standing in a formation of shields and spears on either side and you're poking away at the opposition. Every time you bring your arm forward uh, poking at the person opposite to you, the person to his left has a clear shot at your hand and your forearm. So for the people that are not particularly fond of getting their arms cut off, it, this could have been a very good option because hardened leather is very good at uh, defending against uh, crushing blows and also in some degrees uh, cuts. So looking at history we see the ancient Greeks using van braces made from bronze. They done away with those in the 5th century BC because they thought it was uh, too heavy because their equipment, their line of thorax with the hoplon being 7 to 8 kilograms which is 16 pounds approximately, they said, well this is not that important, so we do away with uh, those. There could have been a Greek soldier at that time saying, uh, looking at him fighting with, uh, with a bronze fan brace and the next day some diplomat coming at him like, uh, hey, we are not doing that anymore and uh, you uh, get rid of that, okay? Then uh, the Greek hoplite may uh, think, well, but I've been fighting with this uh, all my life and I want some, still some arm protection. Then he may choose the leather one because these are very light. This weighs practically nothing on my arm. Looking at the ancient Celts, we see uh, Celts depicted with the bare chest, bare arms, going into battle with the large scutums or scuta. And if I were a Celt, I wouldn't want my arms to be uh, completely exposed because uh, not not particularly because of uh, enemy blows coming in because a, a, a sword will cut straight through. Um, but if I am standing here with my uh, scutum and I'm poking away, I may chafe this uh, arm on the scutum to my right, or. Uh, an enemy comes in with a blow uh, from a spear and it uh, may be a hacking uh, motion that he pokes it in and then goes down or something. Leather is uh, very good at that because uh, if you look at hardened leather, it, if you have a hardened leather breastplate, good luck getting through that. You can penetrate it easier than uh, metal armor 
but still it is very good defense. But looking at uh, how they were used, the Leiden and Dordrecht finds, uh, one of them had uh, metal uh, decorations inside of the uh, fan brace. So I would assume that it was uh, being worn by someone of a great uh, statue, stature. So not only uh, the uh, lower classes would use them, but uh, I believe the upper class would uh, use them too, in cooperation with uh, a gambeson, because everyone wore gambesons at that time. Then the male uh, hauberk on top of it, and then the leather van brace. And the leather van brace, uh, more like something to keep the male over there close closer to your arm so it is more comfortable to wear so it's not flopping around this fits very well to the shape of your body so this on top of um, the gambeson and the male as a third layer of protection is a very good idea i believe outside of the protective value that a leather van brace offers you can also see it as a decorative item because because of it being leather, it's very easy to uh, sculpt, carve in all kinds of shapes and figures and such, or burn it in with a wooden stake. So yeah, so that was also an option of how the leather van brace was used. So looking at all these options and the benefits you gain from wearing one, I do believe it could have been very prevalent in the medieval period. Bottom line is we don't know because it being leather, you cannot just go around with your metal detector and find one because, yeah, it won't show up. Putting that aside, it could have been used way back since the Greek period or even before that. And it was definitely used in the medieval period. In the debate whether or not leather was used as an armor, uh, I think the debate is more about uh, the biker style of leather torso protection and I wholeheartedly agree that yeah that didn't happen that, that's just Hollywood fantasy um, metal bands uh, making a video clip all that stuff you know it's not historically accurate in any sense of the word so yeah, these were my thoughts on the leather van brace and I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you have learned something about this and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!